which you guys today we're taking a look at possibly the world's smallest server that everyone needs. This is the Orange Pi Zero 3. It's very affordable. On the front here, you can see we do have that one gigabit Ethernet LAN port, USB 2.0. It does support Wi-Fi 5, Bluetooth 5.0, and it has that micro HDMI port on there as well for your display. So a pretty nice little bit of kit here. You've got your pin layout here. I'll put a little display up on the screen so you can see the actual pin layout. Now I've included this cool little cooler on here, which means it's very cool when it's running and you can stick it in the corner somewhere. You've got your Wi-Fi and your debugging uh, pins right here as well. The CPU on this is the all winner H618 64-bit Cortex A53 running at 1.5 gigahertz. It does have a small amount of onboard uh, flash on here, 16 megabytes of SPI flash. And we also have for that LPDDR4 memory on here. This is the four gigabyte variant, but they do a one gigabyte, 1.5 gigabyte, two gigabyte and four gigabyte. This is the four gigabyte variant here which means it's plenty powerful to do a lot of things. So we'll take a look at setting this up and I'm going to put Casa OS on here and you'll be able to see how powerful this little device is. So here is a picture of the Orange Pi Zero 3 without the actual cooler on it. And it does come like this, but you can add the cooler in a bundle and attach it all, which I think is worth doing because it protects it. Now, of course, there is a micro SD card storage on here, so you can plug that in and run your operating systems on here, whether it'll be, uh, you know, Android 12 or whether it'll be Debian or Ubuntu or Ubuntu server or any of the other types of operating systems that you can run on this particular device, which means it gives you plenty of options. So it's a powerful uh, little device. Now, I'm going to be installing Ubuntu server on this and we're going to then be installing Casa OS. And again, this will give me much more uh, options to use this device. Now, if you look on AliExpress, the prices on these are insane. It's £14.76 just for the actual unit for the one gig version. But if you go up to the four gig version, it goes up to £27.86p, which is not a lot of money. But you can also do bundles like this where you can get the actual plug and the cooler as well, or the housing for it, uh, the heatsink that goes over the actual device, which I think is worth doing. But if you need more, you can do. And it doesn't cost a lot more to go up, where if you wanted to, say, get yourself a little micro SD card and the micro HDMI uh, cable, which I'd advise you to do, and then you go and get the plug, it's not too bad at £41. So you're getting all this for a pretty cheap price. And you can use this, like I said, for a lot of different things. So let's take a look at how we can set this up. I'm gonna go ahead and head back over to their website and go to their official page. And you can see there is some options available like official tools, schematics, user manual, and stuff like that. But we're interested in the download section for all the operating systems that we can install on here. Now remember, there's also options for third party ones as well. Uh, which is uh, other projects that you can have a look at. But you can see here we've got the Orange Pi OS Arch. We also have Ubuntu and we have Debian, Android and all those other ones right here. I'm going to go straight into uh, Ubuntu and we're going to go ahead and click on the kernel 6.1 uh, for Linux. And this will open up options for other operating systems that we can put on here like Ubuntu, Jammy, Desktop, Desktop X. FCE, or we have also Ubuntu Jammy Server, or you can go with the Ubuntu Noble Desktop or the Ubuntu Noble Server if you wanted to. Choose which ones you want to go for. I'm going to go for the Jammy Server right here and download this one right here and click on the download button. They will come down pretty fast because it's on Google Drive. So let's go ahead and download these and we'll get this downloaded. And what I'll do is I'm going to download Etcher because this is going to create our image on our micro SD card. I'm only using a little uh, 32 gigabyte SD card here, but again, you can put a bigger one in there if you wanted to. So what we're gonna do here is we're going to download Etcher, get this installed, and then we're gonna go ahead and create our bootable media. You will need a micro SD card to USB so you can go ahead and plug it in your computer and be able to create this image. So let me just uh, unpack this if either 7-zip or using the inbuilt uh, Windows version, extract all. So I can extract the actual images. 
And uh, again, this is going to extract the image that we need so we can create our micro SD card bootable media for this particular device. So pretty straightforward stuff, nothing too technical here. And once we've got this right here, you can see it right there. The image for the one at the bottom there, that's the one we're going to need. So let's go ahead and open up Etcher. And I've already got my little attachment plugged in. So you can see flash from uh, the file. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the file that I just downloaded, which is this one right here. I'm going to select this one and we're going to click OK. And now I've already got my micro SD card plugged into my enclosure, which you can purchase online for a couple of dollars or a couple of pound. And this is now going to start the process uh, and start to image our micro SD card. So I'm going to go ahead and let that flash and it will verify this and it does take a bit of time. So be patient. I'll speed this process up and we'll get to the very end. And once that's done, we can then take that micro SD card and plug it back into our Orange Pi Zero Free, and then we're going to boot to it and turn it on. So once you buy all of these little components, like for instance, the adapter, the actual device, and also you're going to have your micro SD card and stuff like that, you'll be able to do this and boot to it like I'm showing you right here. Now, once it's fully booted up, you'll see something looking like this. And what I didn't notice is up the very top, it does say uh, login Orange Pi automatic login so it's automatically logged me in but i didn't read that part because i'm a man and we don't go ahead and read all the instructions but what's advisable is probably typing out the command pass wd and this will allow you to change the password of this device rather than using the orange pie as your password you can also create another user if you wanted to you can read up all about this sort of stuff online it's pretty straightforward stuff but I'm going to go ahead now and because we're already logged in, I'm going to run a bunch of commands like sudo apt uh, update and sudo apt uh, upgrade and do all the upgrades and updates for this particular device. And of course, I will change the password and things like that. So once you've gone ahead and done all your updates and upgrades, like I told you, it's pretty straightforward. Now, of course, the good thing about this is it means that you can have a little mess around on your local network and get used to using something like this. It's not going to cost you a lot of money. You don't need a big computer to plug in your house. You can just basically use something like this that has very little or low power draw and get used to using something like this and setting things up. It's very good to mess around with. So you can see here, I typed out already the pass WD there and changed the password. I'm not too sure whether SSH is enabled here. So I'm just going to quickly enable SSH so I can uh, use the terminal on the computer to log in. Now I'm going to type out this command right here. And what this command is going to do is it's going to pull down CASA OS and install it onto here. So what I'm going to do here is type this out, push enter, and this will then start to uh, download and install CASA OS on our little server that we got set up here. You'll be surprised how blazingly fast this little mini uh, server is. It's really fast. And it's got a quite a good processor on here. So pretty impressed with it. So I'm going to let this uh, unpack and get all installed. And once we've done this, we'll see what it's like at the desktop. And I'm going to log into that on my computer. It will tell you all this once it's finished the install. So be patient and let it do its thing. And once that's done, it's going to give you your IP address, which you can log into on a browser. So I'm going to go ahead on my computer here and type in 192.168.1.1. Uh, 98 and that is the IP address which it gave me so I'm now going to just quickly go ahead on my computer and we're going to go ahead and log in so you can give it a username so I'm going to go ahead and give it a username right here you can use whatever username you want your IP address might be different on your little setup but just follow the on-screen display at the end of the installation part and then you can create an account once you log in on your computer you can see I'm on Windows 11 here and I'm going to be signing in to my little server onto my little computer here. I'm going to go ahead and just put in a username and password and click create. And what this will do is create an account uh, with this particular little uh, server here. So let's go ahead. I don't need to look at the uh, news feed here. So I'm going to cancel this one right here. And there we go. We've got Casa OS installed on here. And you can see we're only using a very uh, little bit of CPU. 
and it's only at 48 Celsius, which isn't too bad. And that's that cooler that I've got on there that's doing its job. And we've also got the RAM on here. You can see it's a four gigabyte version. And you can also see that I'm using a 32 gigabyte uh, storage card. You can use a larger one, of course, if you wanted to. This is just for tutorial pro purposes here. But this is normally good enough for a loads of things that you might want to do. You might not want a lot of storage uh, or need it so you can just keep the cost down and just use a smaller one like I'm doing right here and once you click on the apps you'll see an absolute ton of apps which you can install and use on this system and there is lots to choose from so depending on what you want to do whether you want to use it as a backup device or whether you want to use it as a you know a file server or whether you want to use it to put all your photos onto from your phone maybe back up your phone to here and have it on your own network rather than in the cloud like say uh, google drive and stuff like that it will be on your own personal uh, cloud so you can see right here there's tons to choose from and you can set up loads of stuff like websites or even maybe you want some home automation or maybe you want to set up uh, some sort of a media server maybe plex or something like that or maybe you want to use it for whatever home assistant or you've got other things on here which you can use like next cloud the list goes on Portainer. You can see tons and tons and tons of actual plugins and apps that you can use on here. So really cool little device, very affordable, and I do think it's worth having. Now, of course, you can SSH into this as well from a computer. Let me just go ahead and do this right here. So I'm up a terminal, and now we've got SSH enabled on here. We can go SSH space Orange Pie, which is the user name. I haven't changed that yet. I will change that and create my own user account and again put the ip address right in there it's asking for the password i'm going to put in my new password which i just created on that system and again this one open up uh, it right here and it would help if i typed in the correct password i completely forgot what that was so let's go ahead and type that in one more time and push enter and hopefully I've got it right this time and we should be able to now use strong passwords because this is obviously on your home network and you can see now we have access from our computer to our little server you can then unplug all of the uh, on-screen display you don't need the display cable and stuff like that and maybe you want to set up say for instance a, a pixie boot server or something like that to install windows and things like that you would have to have obviously storage for your isos and you can plug something in the usb port there to hold all your isos and basically install all of your ISOs across the network, uh, maybe Windows, Linux, and things like that. Maybe you have virtual machines, you can install them straight to there, or other devices on the local network, you can use it for that as well. There is tons of stuff. Maybe you've got um, cameras around your home and you want to use it as a, a camera server or something like that to basically, or music server, or whatever it is. There's tons of stuff you can use this little device for, and it's plenty powerful. And with this setup, it's completely silent. You're not going to hear anything and it's super small as well, and it doesn't draw a lot of power. So that's what you can use this little device for. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. A quick shout out to my YouTube members. I really do appreciate the support. Also, check out our Discord server. The link is in the video description, and I'll sure catch you in the next video. Have a lovely weekend. Bye for now.